Good morning, everyone. Happy Postscript Saturday. It's another PS to our real estate week where I share a little behind the scenes at Love to List and also educating you on the value of working with a professional realtor. And today, so I say good morning, good morning, how are you this morning? That's the way that my parents always greeted us when we woke up, so I always like to say that to you on a Saturday morning. I know a lot of you are probably blooming this morning and relaxing and enjoying the fall weather. It is a beautiful uh, time of year here in Northern Virginia, and I'm just looking down because I think my little uh, Bella Wella is needing something. <clears throat> so, hold on. One second! <laughs> Bella, there you go. There you go. Yeah, stay. Hopefully she stays. She's not doing very well, so I'm just keeping an eye on her. Um, anyways, so I have a great topic for you today, and it kind of stems from behind the scenes that I had the last couple weeks. And it's all about the buyer consultation. Um, oh, and before I get started, <laughs> it's amazing I even made it here this morning because I have no internet and no water. We had some work done at our home here and uh, having a little fence put in uh, around our air conditioning units, which is a whole nother story. but. Anyway, so thank goodness for cell service and um, paper products still and uh, a curling iron. <laughs> so anyways, um, the story is that a few weeks back on one of my properties, I got a call and the buyer said that they're interested in buying this home and that um, they you know, would like to go unrepresented. And, oh shoot, um, just a second, little Bella barking, hold on. So sorry, so sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I, I got a phone call, it was a Sunday, and this buyer said they're interested in buying our listing and that they wanted to go unrepresented, which is fine. So we had a, a long talk about that and what that means. And then they proceeded to tell me that they have a home to sell and they don't need to sell uh, when they are purchasing, but they wanted me to represent them on the sale. And so anyways, long story short, um, I met with them briefly and I was going to refer them to another agent just so that they could be ha have someone handle both sides of the transaction. I could focus on representing my seller. Um, anyways, as it turns out, oh, so the point is, is they thought they were ready to go. And so, uh, so as it turns out in the end, they were not going to go forward with our listing. And they called me and they're like, Nancy, we really want you to be our realtor to work on the sale and the buy, you know, will you help us? And so I said, absolutely. And so the buyer consultation, is so important and the reason why i'm sharing this with you is this couple's lovely i've just really really enjoyed getting to know them and help them however they weren't really ready right they weren't ready to purchase they still didn't have a lot of information and um so that's why i wanted to talk to you today about the buyer consultation and the steps that you need to take and you know so this is really good for a first-time home buyer it's also really good for a buyer that hasn't maybe bought in 20 years, which is the case with these folks. Very well educated, very savvy, 
but a lot of things have changed and there's a lot of navigating when you're selling and buying. And so I wanted to talk with you about that. Um, when you, when you, you've heard me in past episodes, when how to find an agent, what to look for in an agent, all the different tips and tricks of, you know, identifying a realtor to work with. So I'm not going to get into that. So at this point, after you've identified the realtor and then you're going to sit down and have a consultation, these are the things that the realtor should be going over with you. And, um, of course, one of the most important pieces of the puzzle is your financing. Um, and for instance, when you're selling and buying, uh, there's a tool called a bridge loan, which is what we're doing with these folks. Um, but what I want to talk with you, there's so much, the, the, the goals in the buyer consultation are getting prepared, um, setting expectations, uh, learning all about you, the client customer, um, your goals, your wants, your needs, if you have any special needs, timing, financing, your expectations, and what's important to you in the process. Um, also the paperwork, there's a lot of important paperwork to review and a calendar review because what a lot of people don't know um, is that uh, if you want to purchase this spring, a lot of people don't realize that when working with a realtor, you actually look at the calendar as to when you probably start wanting to start that process. So if you want to buy in March, you don't want to start in February. You probably want to start now between now and December so that you really set yourself up for success because there's lots of reasons, which I'm going to go over, but it's having a calendar review. So, so some of the tips and tools that, that we go through with our clients, I'm going to share with you, you know, first of all, you know, as I said, you always want to do your due diligence and how you select an agent. We always want to, you know, the agent's going to review with you some of a little bit about their personal stats and, um, their history, you know, of, you know, and experience and knowledge in real estate. So that will be a little bit a part of the consultation, but usually it's like minuscule compared to all of the other, because the goal is to set you up for success. And it's like any, any business, any, any sport, you know, you have to get everything ready in advance so that when you're ready to sign your name on, a, on an offer, which is so serious, it's such a big deal that everything's been done behind before that so that you can confidently know that you're ready to sign. Um, so some of the things that I go through is I always explain the home buying process, you know, from the beginning, middle to end. And I review these things now, like an oversight overview but then also every step of the process, I'm letting them know where we are in the process and also repeating because there's a lot of information in the beginning, but what you want to do is make sure that you are constantly um, checking in with the client, letting them know where we are, what's next, where we've been type of thing. It's constant, constant communication and it starts at the consultation. So, you know, after you select your real estate agent, and you know the financial piece is like key we don't even really go out and look at property until you have been what we call in the industry pre-approved oh hey russ speaking of pre-approved uh russ is a lender that we work with uh all the time and um you know there's a difference between pre-qualification and pre-approved and when you're pre-approved you want to have like it gone through what we call desktop underwriting so that in that everything has been collected up front and reviewed with the lender things about your income your liabilities and things like that so we don't even start going out and looking but we we do have the consultation so um and then the after the buyer consultation and the financial approval and all of that you know you have your home search and we explain how that process works how it works with you know getting online and looking at the properties what to expect 
at the showings, like how available you have to be ready to go look at a property, especially with the speed of the market. Um, <clears throat> I review a little bit about the purchase offer because the thing of it is, is that you don't want to wait to explain the, you know, the process of purchasing until you're ready to purchase because you want to just focus on getting the paperwork in and getting that offer in right away. So I do highlight a little bit about what is happening in our industry, um, what the climate is in the industry when writing an offer, are we in multiple or not, um, talk about the contingency phase and what that means, um, the settlement, what, that, what to expect there, and you get your keys and you move in and then, um, you know, then you get to be on our client appreciation program. So anyway, so we go over the home buying process. We also go over, and I know you guys have seen me share this with you before. It's a really simple little tool, but it is so good. It's when buying a home, <clears throat> the buyer chooses two pieces of the pie and the market will dictate the third. So you've got price, You've got type of home, whether it's a condo, a townhome, a single family, a farm, land, um, and then location. So if you want a um, $400,000 uh, single family home uh, on two acres, you will not be in McLean, Virginia. You will be out in, out in past Western Loudoun. So you pick the price and the type and the market will pick the location. So I explain that to buyers. I also explain to buyers that, um, you know, buying is a process of elimination. So sometimes we kind of start way out, like with, you know, in location or type or price. And then it's a process of elimination. We start to narrow down. So I, again, I explain the process, explain kind of like a basic little uh, key to buying, and then we have the buyer questionnaire. And the buyer questionnaire is really important, and we spend a lot of time there. And this is where I think, you know, my business name is Love to List because that's where my, my talent really shines is getting a home ready for market. It's like a project and setting that seller up for success. But with the buyer consultation and the questionnaire, it's kind of the same thing. This is so key that we really understand what the buyer is looking for. And we have a technique that is called five deep. And what I mean by that is when we ask some preliminary, like basic information, but when it comes to your wants and needs and goals, we don't just ask a question and then write down the answer. Although I do write down the answers, it's proven that when you write things down, it does stay with you more. So I am a paper person during the consultation. Um, and so, but the five deep means that if someone says they want a large yard, okay, what you might think is a large yard is different than what I might think is a large yard. Oh, hey, Carrie. Um, thanks for always all your support and all your great comments and I'm just going through the buyer consultation and the importance of asking what I call five deep questions. So um, if you say you want a large yard, I don't say, okay, large yard and then go on. But Sorry, hope you're still there. Um, I say, what does a large yard mean to you? And you might say a half acre okay a half acre and what are you going to be doing in your backyard and they may say well we want to have a garden so i may assume that you want a vegetable garden or you know raised beds or something and i'll say um so what's the garden for and then you say well i need a sloped yard because i have a special um herb that we grow and it needs to have like facing a certain way. So it has to have a slight slope. And so it's not a bed, it's, it's a unique type of herb or something like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so, and then, oh, also too, what's important to us is that um, we like to spend out time out in that yard. So we really want to have some outdoor space. And I say, oh, so like a 
a patio or a deck, they say, oh yeah, but we definitely want, you know, the ability to be able to have a fire pit and, you know, because we like to watch the herb grow. I mean, who knows, right? But see, you can't make any assumptions, right? So <clears throat> when you say you want a, a chef's kitchen, okay, what does that look like to you and why? Do you like to cook? Oh, no, because I just like the way it looks. Okay, all right, so I'm thinking function and they're thinking aesthetic. So really delving in three to five deep in, in the questions and really understanding your clients, what their interests are, what their habits are, what their hobbies are, what's their lifestyle, do they wanna be close to recreational, do, are they a runner, are they a gym rat, you know, are they a biker, um, do they like to work out at home, do they need a Mac Daddy gym, I mean, you know, they want a three car garage, not to put the cars, because they want a man cave, I mean, there are so many, details to flush out um, in the consultation. And so th that's why I think the buyer consultation is key um, for all of the reasons that I've already discussed. So it's setting expectations, explaining the process, um, reviewing timing. Um, you know, I, as I've talked with you before, there's so much paperwork. This is actually the buyer agency agreement that we would go over. It's six pages, it's a very important document. Plus there's all kinds of disclosures. And it's, the buyer consultation can be a little overwhelming and, um, but I do let the buyers know that this is so important because we <clears throat> want to make sure that you're well prepared so that when we find the home, because after the consultation, and after you get your financials in order and get everything pre-approved, we know what you're looking for. We set you up on a nice home search online, but I'm also at the same time doing a lot of networking, trying to find homes that maybe are coming to the market or are gonna be sold off market, um, looking at new construction. Um, there's so much that goes into the home search and then being ready and available when that home comes on the market, we gotta get out there. We always want to be what we call the first right of refusal. Um, we don't want a home to come on the market, it sits for a week, and then we're like, well, Nancy, we didn't know that existed and it sold. And so it's, it's really understanding the client and setting up expectations, explaining the process every step of the way, you know, and again, the whole reason why I started out was this conversation was because of this client that came to me and he thought he was ready to buy one of my listings. And as it turns out, they were not ready. And we've had a great consultation and now we're really focused on what's important to them and what their needs are. And we're out there looking and it's been a lot of fun to really help them come from a place that they thought they, they knew what was going on but now they have so much more knowledge and, and so much more education. And it's actually fun going out and looking with them and honing in on exactly what it is they're looking for. And so that's, that's what I wanted to talk with you about today. Just setting buyers up for success. Take the time up front with your realtor when you're sitting down with a realtor. Make sure that realtor is really delving in and taking the time. I find what happens in this industry is a lot of people like get a phone call and they run and go and people aren't prepared and then it, it, it sets people up for disappointment. So that's what looking for a home with a professional realtor looks like. And I hope this has been very helpful to those that need it whenever they do, as you know, our our episodes um, postscript saturday are on our youtube channel so it's a resource whenever you need it so i hope that this has been super helpful and um i hope everyone's doing well and i will see you next week in the meantime thumbs up lots of love and keep smiling oh and next tuesday is the first tuesday of the month so i'll be cooking from the heart of my home uh live this Tuesday, I'll be cooking something yummy. So anyways, hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for popping in and take care.